Welcome to this official video tutorial of the Tigers on the Hunt game, a turn-based World War II tactical level war game simulation that covers battles on Eastern, Western and Mediterranean fronts. In this video tutorial we are going to focus on ordnance and armor fighting vehicle fire and movement. The fire mechanics can be divided into two parts in this game. The attacker's firing and the defender's firing. The attacker can fire in his fire segment and in the advancing fire segment. The defender can fire during the attacker's movement segment as a kind of reaction fire to moving units and during the, during the defensive fire segment. Let's take a look at ordnance firing at infantry units. On this map we have one single ordnance, that is this American M1 AT gun. And you can see it has a covered arc that is shown by these green dots. This is done because of a useful tool called, called Covered cover Arc Tool, which I can left-click on on the toolbar. We can also check the fire range by clicking the fire range tool and selecting the gun in the unit control panel, and we can see the white dots showing the fire range. If I want to fire at a unit, I select the gun in my unit control panel with a left-click, and I right-click on a target I get a pop-up window that shows my options. The first option is infantry, and the second to fourth in this pop-up window, which is grayed out here, are the AFV, or Armored Fighting Vehicle, Smoke and White Phosphorus. Smoke and White Phosphorus I cannot fire with this gun, and there is no Armored Fighting Vehicle in the target hex, so I choose infantry. The gun fires, and we can see in the action log window the result. In this case, two squads were pinned, and the gun did not keep its rate of fire. If we use the display the covered arc tool again, I left click on it up here. We can see that these are the enemy targets that is within my covered arc. But if I would like to fire on any of the targets outside my covered arc, I need to rotate my gun. This I can do when I want to fire. I select my gun in the new control panel, and I use the turn left or turn right buttons in the action button segment of the turn and segment panel. So I turn this gun right by a left click on the covered arc turn right button. I can turn it one more time, right. I have no target so I have to rotate it back. For every click on this there is a penalty when I fire because there is a time difference when I turn my turret and the possibility to aim. So now I can select my gun again and I right click on the target that was earlier outside of my covered arc. I choose infantry as earlier, the left click. We fire and we can see in the action log window the result. Now if I want to fire against an armor fighting vehicle I go about it in the same manner as I fire against infantry. I select the hex with the gun with the left click I select the gun in my unit control panel and I right click on the target and I have a target head which is a German Sturmgeschütz 3G. So I right click, I get the pop-up window and now all, all options besides AFV is greyed out so I can choose the armored fighting vehicle. And now we have a couple of different ammunition types that I can use. I can use armor piercing. I can use armor de piercing depleted sabot. Other types of guns can use armor piercing composite rigid or high explosive anti tank, depending on gun and nation. So I choose armor piercing. Results will be shown down here in the action log window. And this time, no, nothing happens, but I keep my rate of fire. Firing with an armor fighting vehicle, AFV for short, I guess infantry is done in the same way as firing with a gun. With the exception that there can be machine guns available on the AFV. We select the AFV with a left click. We select it in the unit control panel. And then we right click on the infantry target. Now if we have machine guns, there could be bow mounted machine guns can be coaxial mounted machine guns and it can be anti-aircraft machine guns. To use an anti-aircraft machine gun, the crew needs to be exposed and not buttoned up. 
This time I select the main armament and I can select either smoke or infantry for, for this vehicle but I select infantry and the vehicle fires against the infantry and we see the result in the action log window. Firing against vehicles is also done in the same way as guns fire against vehicles. We select the vehicle with the left click. With the hex is selected, now we select the vehicle in the unit control panel and we right click on our target vehicle. Now we can use bow machine guns or quacks machine guns but they are pretty ineffective against the other vehicles. So we use the main armament and we select vehicle as a target. Now we can use either armor piercing or high explosive anti-tank ammunition. So, and I select the armor piercing and the result will be shown down in the action log window. Now we are done with the basic fire principles and continue with the movement principles. And we start with the, the gun movement. A gun can only be moved when a human versus human game is played. It can never be moved when you're playing against a computer, and thus a computer can also not move a gun when playing against a human player. So only when human versus human is the game type. You select the hex with the gun, and you select the, the crew that is manning the gun, and now you will have outlined adjacent hexes. The white means you can move there and you will have movement points left. Red means you will not be able to move any further. So if you right click in the, on, in the hex you want the gun to move in two. The gun is moved and now you have a couple of outlined hexes where you can move the hex next time. And these are red because after that the gun will not be able to move any further. So I right click on the hex and the gun has moved. That is the moving principles for guns. Now if we move a vehicle instead, this is a bit more complicated, but I'll go through the principles so you will understand them. We left click on the hex containing the vehicle we want to move. We select a vehicle in the unit control panel and our BT7M37 is, is selected. We want to start the vehicle, so we click the start button in the turn and segment panel uh, we can start it either in front movement or in rear movement. So we click to start to move front forward. The vehicle has started and we have two white outline hexes where to the vehicle move. And we select by right click into the hex we want to move to. The vehicle moves and now I continue into the grain hexes and it keeps moving. your way. I want to take control of that hex but I continue to move as far as I can. And now I have two red hexes where this will end my movement phase and I can't move any further. But if I instead want to stop, uh, I can do that by clicking the, on the action button stop. And the vehicle stopped which is shown by the color of the marker B and a more darker va variant. There is a benefit of stopping. When you fire in the next turn you will be able to hit the target better. But if you stay in, in motion it, it, it will be much harder to hit the target. But that is also from the enemy's perspective. If you're on the move, it will be harder to hit. But if you are in stop mode, you will be easier to hit. That is a good thing to think of, and that could be a strategy of your movement. Now let's choose another vehicle to do some more movement. I scroll down and choose another tank down here. This is a BT-7A tank. Uh, I select it in the unit control panel. I start a vehicle in forward movement. I move one hex by right clicking in the hex. Now I would like to turn and I can turn my vehicle by clicking 
the right turn co cover dock or the left turn cover dock which will move the whole vehicle into the, those directions in uh, will a TCA means turret cover dock which will only move the turrets facing so I move the vehicle right and uh, I continue to move now in another direction I can also choose to let my crew be exposed or buttoned up. If I click on this this button, I will do either crew exposed if they are buttoned up or buttoned up if they are crew, ex crew exposed. And this I can only do one time during the movement phase. So now my crew is exposed and I continue to move. I right click on the targets I want to move to and now I want to swing my cover dark to the left so I left click on the cover dark left button I move into the hex and take control of that and I continue to move forward by right clicking this time I chose not to stop but to stay in, in movement this is the basics of the movement of a vehicle, so I'll, I'll go through it once more. I choose another vehicle. Down here I choose a KV-1 M3940. I click on the start button. I need to select it first, so I click on the unit in the unit selection box. Then I click on the start button. If I do anything wrong, the game will tell me what I did wrong and I have to redo it. So I move forward, I right click. 1x, 2x, uh, I stop my vehicle by pressing the stop button, left click, and now I'll start in reverse instead, so I'll back up instead of going forward, so I click on the start button. You can see in my action log window that I have started in reverse, so I click on the reverse hex. start hex you'll see my facing with the green arrow so I stop my vehicle actually log window says stop I start my vehicle this time my vehicle failed because this vehicle has a lower mechanical re reliability which checks every time so I start and stop and it's stalled instead so I couldn't get my gear in which was pretty normal for the KV ones in the earlier days this is it for you. Try to move around. I suggest you play a training scenario or a vehicle only scenario to try and train uh, and play with the vehicles. This is all for the ordnance and vehicle tutorial. You can check out other tutorials on our YouTube channel. So for this time I say goodbye.